Right, g'day, uh, Mr. T here. Look, uh, this is a, another video about answering physics questions for NCA. Um, this one uh, relates specifically uh, to talk questions at uh, level 2 NCA physics. Um, okay, so the first type of talk question here is when we have two supports. Um, here's an example here. Jess uh, has a mass of 55 kilograms, standing one metre from the edge of a 16 kilogram bench seat. The bench seat is 5.2 metres long and the legs are 0.8 metres in from each end. Work out the support force at A and B. Um, right, uh, let me just put in some of the vectors here. First one is, so some of the force vectors. Here's the first four, uh, force, uh, force, force of gravity Jess, uh, straight down from where she is. Um, here's a force of gravity for the bench uh, and the two support forces. Um, Notice the sub. Uh, well, let's have a look at the first one. The support force always points in the opposite direction to gravity for these uh, types of questions, and they should uh, be directly above the uh, where the supports are. The, uh, the force of gravity of the lever or the bench uh, will go through its centre. Uh, uh, at level two, they're always going to be um, of equal mass on either side, so we'll just draw the force of gravity. Uh, through the centre of the bench, that will be its centre of mass. Um, now, what I like to do is I like to simplify the diagram. So now you see at the bottom here, I've drawn a simplified diagram of uh, this uh, situation. I've put uh, support A here as the fulcrum, okay, and there is actually a, a force pointing up from uh, A here. But since uh, the at the fulcrum the force is going to be at zero distance, there will be no torque at the fulcrum, because obviously whatever force that is times zero is going to equal zero torque. So I'm going to put all the other information we need to know. Um, 3.6 meters is the distance between the uh, two supports, so our fulcrum and our support force B. Um, of course, I did that by taking 0.8 metres away from either side, from 5.2, that gives me 3.6. 1.8 metres, um, that's the distance from the support force to the middle. Um, basically, the, uh, from the end to the middle is 2.6 metres, and I take the 0.8 metres away from 2.6, um, because the fulcrum is 0.8 metres in. And then I put my other distance that I need, which is 2.6 metres. And again, basically, um, I had Jess here, she was standing 1.8 metres from one end. That, um, uh, once I take the 1.8 metres plus the 0.8 metres off, that's uh, 2.6 metres off 5.2, I end up with 2.6 metres. Right, so I've put all my distances in here um, that are going to be important, the distances of my forces away from the fulcrum. So now what I'm going to do is just put uh, the forces in here. So uh, force B I don't know, so I'm just going to label it as force B, that's the support force of B. Um, the force of Jess of course is worked out by the force of gravity, that's her mass times uh, acceleration due to gravity which is 9.8, so 55 times 9.8 equals uh, 529 and same again I do that with the bench, uh, it was 16 kilograms times uh, 9.8 equals 157 newtons. Okay, so um, now I have all of this information here on my diagram, I can work out the uh, total clockwise torques and the total anti-clockwise torques. So these two ones at the bottom, uh, that uh, the two gravity forces are actually moving in a clockwise direction when we have the pivot on the left hand side. And the support force here for B is moving in the anti-clockwise direction. So um, what we have to do is work out the torques for uh, this force here, and this distance away from the fulcrum, and the torque for this force and this distance away from the fulcrum. So let's put that in. So 1.8 times uh, 157 newtons is going to give us our first torque uh, for this. And then 2.6 times uh, 529 will give us our second torque. Uh, clockwise torque. Okay, so we can get the total uh, clockwise torques from that. Our anti-clockwise torques is going to equal whatever the force of B is, times 
times 3.6 meters because uh, this force is 3.6 meters away from our fulcrum or our pivot. Okay, um, knowing that uh, total clockwise torques will always equal total anti-clockwise torques at equilibrium, and we'll assume that this is at equilibrium, all of these questions that we uh, look at uh, to do calculations, we'll assume that uh, the levers or benches are static, they're not moving, they're at a constant speed, so therefore they're at equilibrium. Um, I put these two equations together, TC, TA here, and now all I have to do is uh, I'll simplify and rearrange. So simplify the stuff on the left, and I get uh, 1,658 newton meters equals uh, force of B times 3.6. And um, I move 3.6 to the other side and divide it, and I can work out the force of B. Force of B equals 460 newtons. Okay, so um, take your time, just have a look through the calculations here. Um, one thing we want to do when we get an answer, right, 460 newtons, is I want to see if it's um, a feasible answer. Is it realistic? Um, so what do I expect to have 460 newtons here? Is it um, similar to the other answers, uh, so the other values that I have here? They are, it's within the same ballpark. We would expect, because it's further away from the fulcrum, to maybe a bit smaller than that, so that is uh, certainly a possible answer and it, and it is likely that this is correct okay so let's uh, go to uh, the next part here so I've, I've worked out force B can I work out force A force A can be worked out uh, because this system is at equilibrium we can assume that uh, well, well it's true that all the downwards forces uh, will equal the um, the upwards forces um, and that's because our lever here is at a constant speed, it's stationary. So all the forces must be equal because it's not accelerating. So uh, force, uh, the upwards forces, force A plus force B, force B, which is 460 newtons, equals their downwards forces, which is uh, 157 plus 529. Okay, we've got that equation, all we need to do is solve now. And uh, we uh, rearrange it here, so we've got the force on one side and solve uh, for force A and it's 226 newtons so um, that's the simple way to work out one of these uh, lever, do uh, lever questions is um, we work out uh, the first force by making uh, sorry first support force by making one of the supports the pivot and uh, using the anti-clockwise torques equals clockwise torques and then we can work out the second force by um, just using the idea that all our upwards forces are equal to our downwards forces. You could obviously, if you wanted to, um, have worked out FA by using um, our other supporters of pivot and going through the whole uh, calculation we did um, earlier on. But uh, of course the second one is just a wee bit easier. Okay, thank you for listening.